And that study on surfing's economic benefits, Owen mentioned, was done by the Save the Whales Coalition. It's campaigned for surf spots like Punta de Lobos to be protected from development. Owen spoke to its executive director, Nick Strongstavetich, and asked him how altering the topography of beaches can alter their waves. There's a kind of a unique set of characteristics that need to come together for a surf spot to be an excellent break. And that's uh, how the beach is shaped, what the bottom contours look like, and the overall direction of, of the coastline. And so when major hard surfaces or development uh, disrupt those elements, you end up disrupting the wave. And it's much more than, in a lot of places, than just a, a, a fun thing and a recreational thing. In many, many parts of the world, this is a central part of the economy. And there's evidence, Nick, that in some of these places, Mundaka in North Spain, the wave kind of did disappear for a time, and there was real concern that this world-class surfing beach would actually be not destroyed forever, but would lose its surfing. That's absolutely right. Yeah, Mundaka is an excellent example of this. Uh, it used to be home to a uh, world championship uh, tour event. And uh, when the wave disappeared, the surf contest disappeared. And all the revenue attached onto the surf contest also disappeared. And so essentially what happens when you disrupt that natural flow of elements, in Mundaka's case, it was a flow of sand that created the sand bank and the beach. Uh, when that was gone, the wave was gone all the surfers were gone, and all the business was gone. And your studies, you can actually put a price on this. This is at the heart of surfonomics. You can actually put a value on what surfing brings to these communities. Yes, absolutely. By, by measuring the amount of visitors that come, uh, amount of surfers that come, and also people that like to watch surfing, and uh, figuring out exactly how much they spend. So each time someone comes uh, to surf a place, they pay for the transportation to get there, they pay for the hotel, they pay for potential a surfboard rental, they pay for the wax, they pay for the leash, they pay for the food, they pay for their, their entertainment. And so all those things actually support coastal economies. And when you take surfing out of that, um, you lose a lot of uh, that economic driver. And the interesting thing about surfing versus other sports is that uh, surfing versus soccer, you need to build the field you need to maintain the field and ongoing investment by a community. Whereas surfing to those natural places that occur that have great breaks, all you need to do as a community is not screw them up. And so it's actually an economic driver. It requires very, very little uh, investment by communities that have great surf breaks. That may be the case, but if we take Mundaka in North Spain in your study, you, you say that it's it, the, the, the surfing effectively uh, supports around, around, around about 100 jobs or so. Imagine a fishing trawler that needs the beach to be dredged so that its ships can pass along the coastline safely. That industry might support thousands of jobs. And this is the point, isn't it? You have to make hard decisions sometimes about which industries you support at the cost of others. Yeah, it's, it's ultimately about a balance of, of your economy. Uh, that might be true, but then also you see in some of these extractive industries where fishing collapses very easily, whereas sometimes sus uh, sustainable tourism can actually be a long-term strategy that continues to give back with less investment and less um, environmental damage than, than some other industries. And I say this as a son of a commercial fisherman, so. If there was only one place that you could preserve in the world right now, one surfing beach, which one would it be? Oh my gosh, that's, a, that's an incredibly hard question. You know, I think, um, I think it, for me, um, I love a lot of places. I love places in New Zealand, I love places in Chile, I love places in Hawaii and Indonesia. And I think um, why I wouldn't answer one place is because I see uh, a commonality of threats that end up uh, affecting these really beautiful places. Whether it's just development that's poorly planned out or it's water quality issues or it's uh, ongoing trash and marine debris issues or if it's just loss of access to some of the places that we love the most, I think, um, you know, I see that repeated. And so to choose one place to protect, I don't think I could do that effectively. So. You know, I think that's why I do my job is to, to really try to protect these really incredible coastal places that we have left. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.